Hey, 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 my people. I don't know what's going on lately, if it's COVID or just the desperation of the economy, economies around the world going severely down, that there's been a lot of cases. I've been hearing a whole lot more now where people are like being scammed. Yes, if um, with like immigration agents, with international student advisors, and even on the job. So I'm just like, what's going on? Let's talk about this. I want to talk about how to know if your immigration agent, your international student advisor, and if your job is a scam. But for this video, we're going to focus on the agent and advisor part. So if that sounds like something you're trying to do right now, say you have somebody who has reached out to you or you've reached out to before you pay your money, before you give them your coins, please, let's talk about this. Hello beautiful people, it's your girl Janie, aka Janie of Canada, and on this channel we talk about everything, everything, life as a professional immigrant to Canada, studying, leaving, thriving, running a business, this is where it's at. And if that sounds like something that may be helpful for you in the future, please subscribe. Um, your subscription is free, but it also helps me know that there's actually somebody out there that cares about this information, okay? And so without further ado, let's talk a little bit more about this scam situation. I know that there's a lot of international students looking to apply to Canada, a lot of people looking to move to Canada as a permanent resident, and with that, there is a rise of immigration consultants as well as international student advisors that are coming up. But if you just want to know if that might be a scam, because unfortunately, I've heard from a lot of people, I'm not one, not two, at least 10 in the past six months who have been scammed and have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the currency you're thinking in. And I just want all that to stop. So I'm going to give you a list of things to look out for to know if your agent is a scam. And if you wait till the end, there's one short telltale sign that you will know for sure if they are maybe a scam, or at least maybe not a scam, but at least you know if they are licensed to do what you're doing or not, okay? So the first thing is, and I want us to get this out the door, is if anything looks too good to be true, it is. So, for instance, um, maybe the average cost of talking to an immigration consultant is, or a lawyer is $150, but you find somebody that's doing it for $50 for you, that's, that might be a red flag. Nothing good comes cheap. So, if you're looking for discount services and the average is certain and somebody's like, hey, I got you, it's possibly a scam, okay? Second thing to look out for is communication. If your immigration agent is trying to keep you in the dark with certain things, like you ask them a question, they're like, don't worry about that part, or they're not keeping you updated, most likely there's, that's a sign of scam because you should, your application is your application. And if anything goes wrong in it, nobody's going to ask who's the agent you use, you will be bad. I want to actually emphasize on this point too because the reason why you shouldn't leave your application in anybody's hands and just let it be is because there are situations where if you don't pay attention, you and you actually make a mistake or somebody does something illegal you can be banned from from canada for 10 years and for some people for life and you will still not get to study or come to canada like you plan so this is very important information okay you need to know everything about your application so if you ask them a question they tell you don't worry about that red flag okay the application should be in your name only any document they send you and they have their name um, signing in something that is that's a red flag you are the one applying to that school you're the one applying to come to Canada and so it should be in your name only everything what I usually advise people another thing too is use the agents in the country or the city you're trying to go to and this applies to Canada wherever country you're going to it's always better because they know the lay of the land much more okay so always look out for agents or advisors in the country you're going to another thing to know too with especially um agents that are international student advisors and agents is that the truth is the way that business model works is schools in canada want international students the reason is because you pay two or three times more than the local student so it's of benefit for them to get international students so a lot of times what schools do is that they reach out to licensed advisors and um, education consultants and agents to act as a pipeline for them so that way schools pay these agents a certain percentage of your tuition so that they don't have to charge you i say all of this to say if an education agent is asking you for money is asking you for money for your application that might be a red flag like you have to ask them 
And that will now lead to this next question. Do you or do you not have an affiliation with this school? If the answer is yes, most likely to get an affiliation with this school, the school is paying you for getting my services. If they do not have an affiliation with this school, then you too, you have to be like, wait, though. Does this mean that I might may or may not get application because it's just anybody is just like Janie applying to the school for you. So you might as well in that situation do it yourself. So before you send money to anybody, ask them clearly, what is this money for? And do you have an affiliation with this school? Okay. And with any document that they send you before you sign anything, if they put a name of a company that they claim to be working for, you have to, it's your job. Okay. It's your job to look that company up. Look that company up on LinkedIn, look for a physical address, and use the Google image search to look at the building. Check directories to see how things look at, uh, look like at that building. If possible, you can even call the office and say just, and then hear their voice, like, hi, you reached this company, and then you're like, okay, this is a number that really works. So they shouldn't be using any shady numbers if they are calling themselves representatives of a certain company, especially when it comes to giving grants and scholarships. I've heard of situations where some people are posing as a loan of or financial provider that can give scholarships and loans and grants to students, but they were not. And if you had just called that official company number and checked or checked that person's LinkedIn page, you will see that they don't work for that company. Look at the document they sent you. Look at the logo they're claiming is the company's and look at the logo online. For instance, if a logo, say Empower, for instance, or Prodigy, whatever, any of these companies only appears on the white background, but then this paper person has distorted the logo is a little stretched it is slanty or on the black background then you know it's most likely a red flag these are little things that you should look out for to be like mm, something looks shady about this okay and the truth is when, I, when i'm talking about loans so you don't really need an agent for a loan you can apply straight up yourself most of these companies who actually give loans don't deal with agents for that right they deal with the applicant it's your name your financial status your financial record so honestly if you don't have the time to focus on your application, especially for the school aspect, then you should probably give yourself some time before you're ready to apply again because you don't want nobody's coming in. It's your money, it's your education, okay? Another telltale sign of something that might actually be a scam is if this education, especially for the education part is if they're trying to force a course on you, look at look at the course that has nothing to do with your background or say you apply to study cybersecurity and they're telling you, oh, this university in Manitoba has fisheries. That is obviously sounding weird because true is even if that agent can say get you some fisheries course in a weird school, you still have to explain to the immigration officer when you're applying for your study permit that fisheries is something in your career path when you're a cybersecurity person, right? Another thing to do is look up these schools that any agent is giving you. So there's a lot, there's thousands of schools in Canada, but a lot of them are not licensed to uh, taking international students in a sense where they cannot give you a work permit because you're studying in that school after. What that means is every school who can um, take in an international student where they can get a work permit after should have a UCI number. So if your agent is sending you some school that you've not heard before, check out for their UCI number online. It's on the Government of Canada number. You can just type in Google school name, UCI number, and that will come up for you. If your agent doesn't listen to you, if you ask them questions and they're just like, no, 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 pushing you aside, red flag. Don't miss it, okay? Let them know you are the client, you're the customer. Even if it's a legit agent and it's free services, they should listen to you, okay? Again, another telltale sign or something that might be a scam is if they promise you something they don't have in their power to deliver. Something like visa or admission. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. It's guaranteed you get admission in this school. That's a red flag. Agents by nature of the business cannot guarantee, they're not a university, they cannot guarantee admission. Neither at the immigration offices, they cannot guarantee visas. So if somebody says that to you, most likely they're a scam. Another thing is when they send you documents, read every line of it and they should be ready to answer questions. So if they glance over legal things, you ask them a legal question and they're like, nah, no, that's just formality. 
it's a it's a possibility that they're trying to hide something. And anything that seems shady, anything they're hiding from you, ask the question, doesn't make sense, most likely a what? Scam. And sometimes too, when it comes to these schools, I talked about UCI numbers. If an agent is trying to say you want to go to York University and they're telling you, oh, you need to go to Sheridan University to get to York, sometimes that might be true. But if they're telling you to go to, to, to some community college, again, that's the importance of checking the UCI numbers as a pathway to go to a university, that most likely is fake. Because community colleges don't have the ability to actually count towards um, international studies that can give you a work permit. So do your own research. In every situation, you always have to do your own research. And finally, like I said at the beginning of the video, the one telltale way to know if someone is legal or not a scam when it comes to immigration advisory and international student advisors would be to use to check on this website ICCRC, which is the body, it's a body of regulated Canadian immigration consultants and regulated international student advisors, RSIAs. So what you go in there is always ask your agents for their RCIC number. If they are, if they are registered con immigration consultant, if they are an RISA registered student, um, in RISA registered international student advisor, ask for their company name, first name, last name, so that you can go on ICCRC search ICCRC regulatory body and put in their name and their company name and search for them. If they don't exist on that list, ask them, hey, I noticed you don't exist on this list. What's up? And this is a body that regulates this profession across the world. If you're dealing with Canadian immigration and Canadian education studies, you should be licensed. And the truth is your agent, if they're not a scam, would publish this number everywhere so that you can always do your own due diligence. And that's it folks. If I missed anything, please let me know. I really hope that you're not watching this video because you've been scammed. But let me know if there's anything else I missed. If there's any sign that you're seeing right now with an agent that you're dealing with and you're not sure if they're a scam or not, let me know in the comment box and I'll be happy to help you check that out, okay? And if you like this video, like it. If you loved it, loved it. And please subscribe and share this with a friend for more helpful tips as a newcomer to Canada. As always, I will see you in the next video. Have a blessed day. Bye now.